We have higher rates of obesity, diabetes, and chronic illness than any other population that has ever lived on this planet. And we do so even though we spend far more money on healthcare than any other nation in the history of the world. Do you see why you have to take charge of your health and your food? How many of our established political leaders have been willing to stand up to the aggregate power of the junk food conglomerates, corporate agribusiness, the agrochemical polluters, the insurance companies, and the pharmaceutical industry. The result is painful. We're swimming in a toxic soup of 90,000 basically unregulated industrial and agricultural chemicals. We're worn down by a diet of corporate junk food and the incessant barrage of advertising. And it's not just our physical health that's suffering. So is our mental health. People in the U.S. are only 4% of the world's population, but we take more than half of the world's antidepressant drugs. Far too many of us are in anguish and despair. Suicide rates in the U.S. for white middle-aged women jumped by 80% in the last 15 years. Among girls 10 to 14, the suicide rate tripled. What does this have to do with the food you eat? A lot more than most people realize. The worse our diets, the more our bodies and minds suffer from nutrition-induced stress. The average American consumes nearly two tons of sugar during their lifetime. That's equal to the amount of sugar in nearly two million Skittles. Now we know that eating too much sugar dramatically raises your risk of heart disease and cancer and diabetes and dementia and obesity. What do you think it does to your mental equilibrium? And speaking of Skittles, did you know that earlier this year, a massive truckload of Skittles spilled on a highway in Wisconsin? The Skittles, which were not wrapped or packaged in any way, were on their way to a feedlot to be used as cattle feed. Is this insane? We're feeding candy to cattle. But this is just another example of the bizarre and stunningly unhealthy ways we feed and raise the animals from whom we get industrial meats, dairy products, and eggs. The worse our diets get, the fatter and the sicker and the more unhappy we get. More than two-thirds of us are now overweight or obese. What is the U.S. government doing about it? Here's an example. In the United States, we've got a Department of Agriculture that's encouraging us all to eat more fruits and vegetables. That's good. But the very same Department of Agriculture is spending tens of billions of dollars every year subsidizing the production of genetically engineered corn and soy, which ultimately brings down the price of factory farmed animal products and highly processed foods. What sense does it make for us as taxpayers to be heavily subsidizing crops that every health authority is telling us we should be eating less of? What sense does it make for us to be doing almost nothing to subsidize the fruits and the vegetables we're supposed to be eating more of? If there is a responsibility to spend the public's money in a way that's consistent with the public's health, Shouldn't taxpayers be subsidizing the foods that are better for us? We need a food revolution because today, almost two-thirds of the calories in the American diet come from ultra-processed foods. Because almost all of these highly processed foods contain unlabeled, genetically engineered ingredients. Because we spray the fields growing our foods with poisons. And because our current food system enriches drug companies, agrochemical polluters, and junk food companies at the expense of farmers, rural communities, and taxpayers. Today in the United States, we're spending 18% of our entire gross domestic product on what we call health care. But really, should it be called health care? Wouldn't it be more accurate to call it disease management? Most of today's doctors are largely untrained in nutrition. Their medical training is focused on managing disease symptoms with drugs and surgery. And meanwhile, our diets are getting worse and worse, and our population is getting sicker and sicker. We need a food revolution because our food is making us fat and sick and bankrupting us. It's time to live like your health depends on it. 
Whenever we eat, we make a choice. Whenever we choose a food, we either improve the world or we make it less. We either sustain the conditions that are conducive to life or we worsen and harm them. It's an act of courage and love to prepare healthy food for ourselves and for others and to speak out and educate people. We need a food revolution for so many, many, many reasons. Every year in the United States, we throw away 96 billion pounds of food, which means we're feeding our landfills as much as we're feeding our people. Why is all this food being thrown away and not being given to those who need it? Why are we wasting so much food and not making sure that every one of us has enough to eat? We need a food revolution because Western food is taking over the world. Traditional cultural cuisines are enriched, even defined, by their use of herbs and spices. Have you ever enjoyed Indian food with its curries, turmeric, cardamom, and coriander? Or Mexican food with its chilies, cumin, garlic, and oregano? Have you ever appreciated Italian food with its parsley and sage, basil and thyme? Or French food with marjoram, tarragon, and savory? In every traditional culture's cuisine, Herbs and spices add fascination and intrigue to the flavors of foods, and they also define the culture, and they have considerable health benefits. But with industrial and processed food, with what has come to be known worldwide as American food, instead of herbs and spices, our mega food companies have added huge amounts of sugar, fat, and salt, as well as chemical flavorings and colorings and preservatives. These overpower our senses, and they mask the lack of flavor of industrialized food. Rather than supporting health, they lead to heart disease, dementia, obesity, diabetes, and all the other Western diseases that plague us today, and that we are exporting worldwide along with our foods. We need a food revolution because the richness of our relationship to food has been hijacked by the corporate manipulation of our taste buds. People say, I want to eat what I like. That's my right. That's my freedom. True. But what if what people like has been determined by the food industry? What if mega food corporations have sought control over our taste buds? And what if, to a remarkable extent, they have achieved that control? Do you think people naturally like what will make them sick and fat? People want to feel healthy and vibrant, but the industrialized food industry has added so much salt, so much sugar, so much fat, and so many chemicals to the foods they sell us that they've gotten most of us hooked. The big food companies actually employ what they call craveability experts, whose job it is to formulate food products that are explicitly designed to produce cravings. The result is that many of us today feel deprived if we aren't eating foods that undermine our health. We need to take back our taste buds. We need to take back our mouths and our tongues. I want us to experience eating not as an exercise in addiction and not as a form of obeisance to the food industry, but as an act of self-care, a connection with the people we love and respect for the living earth. I want us to experience eating as a way of celebrating what truly sustains us, a way of affirming the values and the pleasures and the joys we hold most dear. If we're going to, together, make the changes that are needed in our lifetime, we need to know the facts and we need to put them into action. And that's why I'm so grateful and excited that you've chosen to join in the Food Revolution Summit because we can make a change and because what we do, what you do, matters. At the beginning of this video, I promised I'd tell you why I think we need a food revolution. I also promised that I'd tell you what gives me hope even in these profoundly troubling times. It gives me hope that the norms of a toxic food culture are losing their appeal and people are increasingly hungry for change. We've seen in the last 15 years a fourfold increase in sales of organic foods, with organic food becoming a $43 billion industry in the U.S. alone. We now have polls in the United States showing that more than 90% of the American public thinks that animals raised for food on farms deserve to be free from cruelty. 
Gestational crates for mother pigs have been banned in nine U.S. states and throughout the entire European Union. And it gives me hope that the number of people who want to ban junk food marketing that targets kids has quadrupled in the last eight years. We've got a long way to go, but we're seeing progress in many ways. It gives me hope that the Campbell Soup Company has announced that it will voluntarily label all of its products that contain GMOs, and there will be no price increase. It gives me hope that non-GMO certified foods have gone from being non-existent to a $13 billion industry in the last five years and that the number of farmers markets and community supported agriculture programs have increased tenfold in the last 15 years. Many countries, including Denmark, France, Mexico, Hungary, Iceland, Norway, and South Africa, have adopted taxes on sugar sweetened beverages. The idea behind these taxes is that they will both reduce consumption of these unhealthy beverages and provide a funding source for public health measures to fight obesity and chronic disease. Many U.S. cities, including Philadelphia, San Francisco, Oakland, Boulder, and Chicago have done likewise. It gives me hope that there's a food movement growing and building. It's building in political power and it's building in economic power. And this is showing up often in everyday, very simple choices where people shop and what they choose to buy when they shop and what they choose to feed their families. It's a whole lot of little drops in the bucket, but when you add it up, it can actually become a whole lot more than a bucket. It could start to become the tide of history turning. That's why what really gives me hope is you and the millions of people like you who care deeply, who care enough to open their eyes and see what's really happening who see that while we can rarely look to the government to watch out for our best interests, we can look to each other. We can educate ourselves. We can take charge of our health and of what we eat. We can use the perils and uncertainty of our times as a catalyst to awaken to our power to say no to what harms us and to say yes to what truly nourishes us. I'm given hope by each and every person who acquires a passion to find the true meaning of living a healthy life and who wants to spread this truth and this knowledge to help those who have been kept in the dark. What gives me hope is everyone who's getting informed and standing up for a healthier food future. When you do, you are literally standing for the hope of our world. If you're someone who's choosing to step forward and to take leadership, I want to congratulate you and I want to thank you and I want to support you. And I also want to invite you to spread the word about this summit so that your friends and loved ones can join in too. If everyone watching this video told just five friends about the Food Revolution Summit, we could multiply our impact exponentially. Just tell them to go to foodrevolutionsummit.org to sign up and they'll get the entire summit for free. That way they can join you in getting the latest insights from some of the top food experts on the planet about how we can leverage the power of food to stand up for healthy lives and for a healthy planet. I look forward to working with you for a real food revolution. And most of all, thank you for caring. The global pandemic has changed our world forever. Millions of lives have been lost, and tragically, it's not over yet. And here's something that's really kind of important. Some of the biggest COVID-19 risk factors are what's called comorbidities. These include obesity, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and other chronic illnesses. And the good news here is that whether or not you ever get COVID-19, the foods you eat and the choices you make today have the power to shape your destiny and your health for the rest of your life. Right now, it's more important than ever to clean up your diet, to eat the foods that support your immune system. Scientific studies show us that eating the right foods can help you prevent and even reverse cancer, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune conditions, obesity, can help prevent Alzheimer's. And these foods really are your number one way to strengthen your heart, your brain, your microbiome, and your immune system. They can help you to have lasting energy, more satisfying sleep, and to set you up for a long, 
happy life. I'm Ocean Robbins, host of the Food Revolution Summit, and I want you to know the truth about your food. That's why my dad and colleague, two million copy, best-selling author John Robbins and I have teamed up with 24 of the world's most brilliant, revolutionary experts to bring you this year's biggest breakthroughs in food and health. And because this information is so important, right now more than ever before, we're offering it to you completely for free. In this, the 10th anniversary Food Revolution Summit, you will find out what's really going on behind the scenes in our food system. You'll find out which foods you need to avoid and what the leading edge of medical science is discovering about how you can optimize your immune health, your brain health, and your heart health. Most importantly, you're gonna find hope for your future and real, actionable, scientifically grounded solutions that can improve your life and your world starting today. I can't wait to share it all with you. Remember, it's completely free. So go ahead and sign up right on this page. All you need to do is enter your name and email to reserve your spot right now. And I'll see you in the summit.